with I'm me. <laughs> I'm calling to order um, a regular meeting of the planning board for Thursday, February 4th. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good. That was good. <laughs> Thanks, James. Been practicing. Um, so I would like to introduce the board members. We have three new board members tonight, um, and we are down one more. So this is actually uh, this is really nice to see some new faces here. So I have to my left Jerry Graybill, to my right Vice Chairman Mike Larue. I have Phil Roy, who is a new member. He will be a voting member tonight, although he is an alternate right now. On my TV screen, I have Allison Hurlihy. I love that we have girls. And I have Amber Fecto, who is no relation to me, although she is a client of mine. Um, so welcome new board members. I wanted to take a moment. This is something that um, I think is very important. <laughs> James is going to call it the preamble. But this is, this is actually um, a semi-direct quote from our town attorney that she read a few months ago and I'm going to start reading it at the beginning of the board meetings because I think it's important especially because we get such high ratings at home I want the public and our new board members too to be aware of what our roles and responsibilities are uh, so she reminded us that we are to constrain ourselves to the objective rules in front of us and the rules that have or yes the objective rules that have been that are in front of you and the rules that have been provided to you Put your own personal feelings out the door, review the evidence that's been provided and the applications that are provided. You take the information as it has been reviewed by the town planner and often a third party reviewer. You look and see how those materials provided meet or do not meet the objective criteria in front of you. If a use is permitted in a zone, it is consistent with a comprehensive plan and rezoning is the only sol solution to limit uses in a zone and we're actually going to see that before us tonight in action but just a good reminder that um, our own personal feelings are not brought to the table here at the Berwick Planning Board and with that I'm going to open the first public comment session um, open to all Berwick residents and property owners uh, with anything having to do under the purview of the Berg Planning Board. If you have anything to say, please come up. And do we have anybody in the waiting room? We do not. Okay. Jody. <laughs> <coughs> and just state your name and your address. You know the rule. Jody Rogers, 420 Portland Street. Um, I would just like uh, any input that the board may have or to have a discussion about the fact that um, the requests that we have made uh, in our Shoreland Limited Residential District, um, I, I know it requires a DEP approval or review of some type. I'm not sure which comes first, whether they have to approve something before we could actually put it to vote. Um, I would like to ask that the Planning Board would consider putting together um, a proposed warrant to change the limited residential to a limited um, industrial commercial that's consistent with the surrounding areas and um, make it conditional on the fact that DEP would approve it. Um, like I said, I'm not sure just yet of the, the chicken and egg on, on who has to say yes to this first, but we discussed it at length last meeting and I think um, I'd, I'd hate to get pushed like another whole six months or another vote or whatever so I would ask that the town consider putting it on the the, the list of um, ordinance changes and that I will work diligently with James to see if we can get DEP all squared away by the time of the vote or just make it conditional on an approval by DEP okay thank you okay. yeah and we will talk about that in new business tonight thanks Jody Seeing nobody else, I'm going to close the public comment session and move to the approval of minutes. I know Jerry found something. <laughs> James, yeah, I was. Yeah, page one, two, three, under adjournment. Yeah. And it says a motion to approve the minutes. It says motion to adjourn. Should yeah, be in there. You copied and pasted, and you didn't yep. change it. 
You didn't approve minutes at the adjournment? Okay. <laughs> Secret, you copy and paste. <laughs> it's not a secret anymore. Um, anybody else? Mike, did you find anything? Nope. That was the only thing I found. So we are going to then have a motion. And of course, if you weren't here um, for them, you would abstain from voting on the minutes traditionally. So I just need a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll make a motion to approve as amended. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion? And all in favor of approving the minutes as amended? All opposed and abstaining? I think Amber's abstaining. <laughs> Good job. You'll get it. You'll get the hang of it. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. So five approve, one abstain. All right, so moving on to new business, we are going to talk about the land use ordinance amendments and two rezoning requests. James? This is the third meeting, I think, uh, we've talked about um, changes one through eight. Um, let's go over them since um, we have a few new members. I won't go into too much detail, um, so I'll just jump right into it. Uh, number one and number two, they these are these are mostly cosmetic changes, so nothing legally is changing um, except for a few nuances. This is done to improve uh, people when they look at our ordinance to understand what it means, and for Jen and I to be able to ex to explain it more effectively. Uh, so, with any land use ordinance change, if it's highlighted in red and underlined, that means it's new language added. Anything crossed out is deleted. So, at this this first part here is the litany of changes that are proposed, and what it happen, happens at the end is it's boiled down to a nice and concise paragraph that isn't conflicting, because all this stuff here goes on to conflict later on with uh, 7.21 mm -hmm. and um, by directly referencing it and by making a few amendments it just cleans it up gets rid of the discrepancies and it's just easier for uh, we'll get we get Jen and I get so many questions about this topic probably averaging one a week I'm not even kidding during the filling season I think this will help immensely. Yeah, I don't, and I think that we all agreed that that all made sense. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, number three, um, what's happening here is this is, for the most part, making uh, marijuana uses more res restrict restricted by um, make, making it so properties have to have frontage on RCI on Route Four. That was a big point of discussion. Um, right now, I'll make a point that marijuana uses are capped, and that hasn't changed. Um, that's something that we will be we'll be reviewing this spring with the select board to see where we're at. Um, it's the establishment under the same ownership that's preventing this leapfrogging, mm -hmm. where um, you know even if they're in the same ownership, it's kind of a loophole that we're closing up. And um, lastly allowing marijuana testing facilities. Marijuana testing facilities is probably the lowest intensive, lowest security risk, but it also has potential for high property value, high personal property. It's basically a science lab, and it makes sense to have one on Route 4 if we're going to have um, a lot of marijuana activity. The marijuana mile. Yes. Well, <laughs> at least for your, oh, sorry. your county. It's us, it's, it's us and Elliot right now. Yeah. Opted in. Uh, Jerry had a question. Yeah, I got a quick. I got two questions. One back up under other marijuana estab establishments. We had asked this before, like over at Kind Farm, where they're building and doing what they're doing now on those lots. Does this allow them to buy up all that other unused land and continue to grow next to them, all the way down to I Blackberry think, Hill Road yeah, and the other way as I well? Think they would, there's nothing that's preventing it at this point. 
because that would be one big conglomerate all the way along there. Right. Yeah. Right. It would have to go up on the board every time, though. So at some point, we 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 could cap off on how big they could get. Well, that that's kind of why I'm asking. Is, is there words. verbiage to that effect? Not right now. No. Okay. There isn't. Should should there be? Well, because we have the I mean, thousand there's a, foot rule. There's a sixty thousand square foot facility that's approved. So I mean, they're only going to go what? 10,000 square feet. So at this point, they still have another 50 to, to go before we okay. start yeah. judging them on what's excessive. Yeah. Yeah, we have the thousand it's, foot rule that they can't that, be I within a thousand feet of somebody else. Can, okay. Um, possibly, probably at this point, something to talk about for November. November. Yeah. Um, right. Let's keep it, keep talking about it because it's really about with the ordinances, just creating the language that just makes mm -hmm. sense. Right. You know, how do you, how do we cap cap the expansions? Because there are there are some expansions, um, not size wise, like use wise, that are that are pending. There's one at least that's pending. Right. Who? Uh, Street fire parks. Okay. That's something that's all. I mean that's. Uh, right. Right. Okay. And then the other question I had, like Nicole said, is down under the eight point two five point eight permits. The first sentence doesn't make sense. The first me. sentence is very confusing. 8.25.8 a the number of conditional uses number of conditional use permits granted for oh yeah the, the four needs to go okay so granted a, in each zone as of shall be the limit of permits so but so there is no actual limit it's just that so if 100 people come in on june 9th and there's 100 granted that this is June 9th. Oh, this was June this 9th of existed. last year. Okay, it's that's already, of last year. Yeah, okay, sorry. so strike four then. Yeah, four. I, I can get rid of, you can, we can amend our land use ordinance uh, for typos and things. Right. So we can okay, that. just get rid of four. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. That good for you? Yep. Okay. Uh, that clarifies you, that. You may continue. Number four, five, six, and seven. I don't. We're taking seven out, we said, right? The lighting. I, I guess it was taken out. Okay, good. All right, good. I don't have that. I have yeah. last I have last month's copy, so I'm still going off of that. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. I like to hop along. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so the lighting thing was taken out. Okay, I'm good. Just skimming through 8.12, 8.6, personal sawmill. Those things are extremely minuscule. Right. Changes. What about number nine? Are we still are we still have number nine in there? No, so we took out, oh yeah, so now it's number eight. Yeah, so, so the building size. Building eight, one thing, um, the reason why I'm proposing to keep this in here, yeah. we're going to have a proposal coming in for a recreational facility okay. that's being proposed for about that size. Okay. So I've been, um, I've been doing a little research, i.e. Googling other towns, other towns in Maine and other towns around the United States for if in their downtown area, if they're limiting the size of buildings and the only limits that I'm finding, I haven't found anyone that limits the square footage yet. The only limits I'm finding are height limits, which we already have. Um, I have found some verbiage and obviously it, this is too soon to, to even think about for June and it wouldn't apply across the street anyway because it'd be after the fact. But um, there are there are there is verbiage about um, like the facades and Stuff. And I know we have stuff in our overlay already, but it's just, it was just more detailed. But I will say that, like, no, I found nowhere, and that's small towns, big towns, where they're limiting the square footage of buildings. So. Yeah, our village overlay district is very progressive, um, very forward thinking, has a lot of architectural elements to it. That's mm -hmm. why the footprint size was capped out. Um, but I think going to 25,000, that's, um, it allows, it allows, um, it allows companies flexibility and it's a good size. Okay. The, the new one that I added here is number nine for adding a, an exception for wholesale businesses. And this is going back to Zach Holt, if you remember that, off of Blackberry Hill Road. No. That was the one Dave Van Dusen was not so cool about. Yeah. Allowing. So that was. It was a farm, pharma, they were going to do pharmaceutical. On Stop Blackberry open. Hill Road? Yeah. Shipping and receiving type of oh, stuff. Oh, I was, I, I was, this was during an absence of mine. So what's, what this is, is it's under wholesale business uh -huh. being allowed in the R3 district if it meets the following requirements. 
it does not involve, shall not involve the use of heavy commercial vehicles. The wholesale business shall frontage on a public street. The wholesale business shall not create more than 20 vehicle trips per day. Okay. And the vehicle trips per day, that includes employees. So it's a very, I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's a wholesale business that also, I pulled those standards from home occupation standards. Okay, I was wondering where you got, where, where that came from. So that, basically what Zach wants to do on Blackberry Hill Road would meet the standards of a home occupation business. He just doesn't live there. For now. He won't, live there, period. he won't live there, period. If he got big enough, would it increase or would it change? That's that's the, you know. That's, yeah, I mean, if he, if he got bigger, right. then. Then the footprint, the, the traffic would get bigger because it would be allowed. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be allowed. He'd be, right. he'd be exceeding the, the use allowance. And there. who would be the one that would monitor that, though? The town? Yeah. someone would have to complain about it yeah. about the heavy foot the heavy yeah. traffic so as of right now what is it what do we have for wholesale business we don't have any of this so this is more limiting that what than what we have right now a wholesale business right now is only allowed in r3 along route 236 nine yeah and so technically he's not allowed right now on it right so this will allow it i mean yeah it, it makes sense to have it only in those zones to be honest with you i don't i mean i'm not sure that it should be on in r3 on a neighborhood road i i think i would want to discuss this more before popping it in for june yeah what is what is the verbiage specifically on the heavy vehicles because it as i'm reading it is it a, is it a prohibition or is it a yep so that's okay. it would be prohibiting um, heavy commercial vehicles okay all right so anything with uh two or more rear, rear, rear axles is the whole uh this thing is starting with the uh, distribution business is that the deliveries are happening from personal vehicles or okay. UPS truck. Okay. Thing. Yeah, because that adds a whole other level of complexity to infrastructure and maintaining right. the roads and such. So, yeah. it's, okay, I wasn't clear on that. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the whole I I I've put, had Collector Street in there, which is a defined. <laughs> it connect. Those are the streets that that, that are the connection points between. Mm -hmm. The major highways that's the next level down for streets um but i thought public streets most public streets are those streets and it's a simpler way of saying it there are some public streets that are just extended driveways pretty much that are right <laughs> yeah i would like to talk more about this before yeah, we no, yeah. before no we put it to selectmen and this is something that um Part of a larger discussion and, and possibly the comprehensive plan committee should come in here mm -hmm. once we have some that's further developed to talk about how 87 percent of our tax base right now is residential yeah so the, at some point at my um opinion at this point would be and this something needs to be um, more backed up probably and done at a later time is that the town needs will need to be aggressive in looking at where we can get commercial uses to help offset the residential tax burden but um we can put a pin on the wholesale business for probably november to get that would be time. good yeah i would like more time to discuss it and i'd like more time for um the public to hear about it especially i don't know blackberry hill road with we've got the new development going in you've got the schools you've got heavy truck trucking that already goes down through there like that's there's just a lot going on over there i can't imagine anybody anybody that lives over there is going to want a wholesale business there i certainly wouldn't sure all mm -hmm. right number number 10 this is probably the one of the more controversial ones oh I good probably would, <laughs> would probably suggest having it as its own separate board article if we decide to pass it on to the select board okay this allows a waiver provision for our impact fees why most most towns and cities, or some towns and cities, have them. A we just got the we just got the impact fees. Why are we wanting to waive them? Right. So are we making the, too much money? In the case of the edge, uh -huh. we're mandating that twenty five percent of their property is open space. Mm -hmm. We're mandating them to. They knew that when they bought it. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. and we're mandating them to have recreational facilities. We're also charging them impact fees. For recreational facilities based on the added demand that's going in there for recreate 
what do you mean we're charging them? We're charging them based on how many bedrooms they're per Correct. bedroom that they're putting in. We're Correct. charging them for the recreation of the people that they're bringing into the town. Correct. So what's based off of the scale of the project, um, you look, we're looking at probably $120,000 of impact fees that we're up against. Mm -hmm. That has very real potential of limiting and, and more speaking, more appropriately to speak more broadly about generic examples is that that starts limiting the scale and the investment potential of developments. So what's happening, and to sum this up, what's happening is we're making, yes, we're making a, a maybe $50,000 more, or maybe if we waive $50,000 more, mm -hmm. but we are inhibiting, it might end up being a couple of units of residential, it might be some commercial units, and that's foregone tax revenue in perpetuity. I haven't seen the, can you show me something that shows what our impact, what the impact fees that we've already collected have actually physically gone toward? Because if I'm, I guess if I saw like bunches of new sidewalks or a new building for recreation for the town, I'd be more inclined to waive impact fees. But at this point, the, if they're limiting residential, um, which is what the townspeople have very strongly said that they want, um, I'm not putting my own personal feelings on it, but that's what the town wants. They want to limit residential. So if impact fees are limiting residential, but also bringing money in, I can't imagine, I would put it as a separate thing. If if we're in favor of it and it goes to the selectmen, I would definitely put it as separate. It's super controversial. And I don't, and I understand, I understand your side of it. I just, I think it's limited. as a representative of the town of the people of the town of Berwick. And this, this is something that it's tough to bring up at this time, it's something that needs to be talked about more. But I just, um, yeah, it, it's something that will will probably if this if the impact fees don't change, it'll limit both residential and commercial development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's okay because we don't have any right now. So I mean, something will be better than nothing. But it's like, but we don't have anything. I don't, I don't know what our impact fees have done. Can you tell me? We've we've been collecting them for how many years now? I have to get back. <clears throat> we've okay. collected. I I know the total we have about 120,000 we've All collected right. for for so 240,000 for okay, good. total and we actually have side note we have $120,000 for the acquisition of open space which is something that the comprehensive planning committee can I'd like the acquisition of sidewalks up Sullivan Street <laughs> and, and <laughs> possibly putting the cart before the horse but as far as you know the impact fees go would it be beneficial if they're they're wanting to develop to to do a phased impact fee, you know, uh, a lower percentage to start to entice the business or or whatever the project is, and then as time goes by and they're more established, then you know it's a tiered approach. Is that something that's even or is that it's something to think about? Again, I don't think this is going to June. Right. I would be happy to work on it and and bring it to November once I see some sidewalks. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> like, yeah. that's all I want to see is some better sidewalks. We all do, right? Can I just say something? I don't know, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, okay. Um, so I, I totally hear both sides of this. Um, I do think maybe having a waiver like um, Phil had mentioned where you're kind of scaling upwards might kind of, you know, if the town is not necessarily wanting these big commercial groups to come in, it could kind of help smaller commercial groups to be able to establish themselves here, you know? So we could kind of get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think that's definitely something we can talk about and um, yeah. carry over to November. Yeah. Very interesting, James. What else do you have controversial? Oh no, all right, so now we're on to <laughs> like, all the controversial stuff's at the very end, I see. Yeah, no. um, Send everybody out angry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now we're on to rezoning requests. This um, one, um, Phil gave us the the exact- um, Phil, not Phil Roy, Phil, our, uh, our attorney. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a pretty straightforward procedure from here. Um, all the property owners will be uh, notified. But this seems to be, it's something that I would recommend it meets the town's comprehensive plan. And I, I can summarize too. Um, what this is, and I'll scroll down here, it's um, rezoning a um, otherwise 
residential area that's currently zoned as commercial industrial, which is probably the most um, uh, where we allow where we allow industrial uses, the highest intensity uses in the town are allowed in the RCI zone. Um, we found out uh, about a few months ago that it doesn't necessarily make sense to have um, RCI you know, everywhere where it is. Um, we consulted our town attorney and um, it's, it seems like this is a go where there's about, let's see, there's one, two, there's 11 properties that would be rezoned from uh, rural commercial industrial to R3. And R3 is one of the most restrictive <clears throat> zoning districts. Um, there are commercial uses allowed in every zone. It's just a scale between uh, RCI, R3, and then we have some shoreland zoning, which are even more restrictive on top of that. Are we creating any non-conforming properties by doing that? Have you looked into that? Um, nope. Okay. Nope, we would not. Yeah, no, it's, it, they're all, it's a- It's, it's all a, residential. Right, right. Just like with setbacks and density and all that. That's, I, I'm just wondering if the, if all of that follows the we same might, as our- We might be creating, uh, no, because the, the minimum lot size out there is, is 90,000 square feet. Okay. Yeah. There might be some setback stuff, but there's nothing that's, I mean, prohibitive. Okay. Yeah. Is there a, is there a mechanism to, to get public comment on, on that? And, and have we done that? We will at okay. our next all meeting. Right. Okay, uh, all right. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my concern would be, and maybe I'm showing my no, naive, no. how naive I am to the That's process, okay. but like just trying to wrap my head around it. So if we put it out for public comment and, and you know, everybody that's down there says, yeah, great, we, this is what we want, but are we setting a precedence that ties our hands at a later date if someone else wants to do something similar and we've already set a precedence? That that would be my only concern. We're certainly setting a precedent by it's doing a good, no, it, it's, it's a great thing. It's a great point. And I actually, um, I, I think this this one, I, I wanted to hold off on this to for comprehensive planning because for comprehensive planning, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of this mm -hmm. where one of the major themes with the comprehensive planning is to look at our zoning map to be more granular like this. Mm -hmm. Instead of having clean lines, most towns and cities have zoning districts that have, you can't just do one lot that has a different zone, but you have little neighborhoods Pockets. That are yeah. specific and you can create, we have about maybe 10 different zones. We can create 20 zones that have shades of different zones that actually fit yeah, like overlays. Yeah, there, there are. The more you read, the there's really creative things out there that yeah. you can do with zoning. In terms of precedent, I mean, if more people come out of the woodwork that really want to shape their zoning, I think nothing has been lit litigated like the Pond Road. We, <laughs> yeah. we, we went mm -hmm. six six months of, and it really was highlighted that it was great. Great question. It, it was highlighted that. Hey, this is a zoning issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but I do encourage people that uh, I would love to hear if you think your neighborhood wants to be rezoned. I would just say that what well, likely what's going to happen is be part of the comprehensive planning effort because we're going to be looking at all of the zoning districts, and we much rather do it all at once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got the blessing of our town attorney mm -hmm. to move forward with yep. this rezoning. Um, just we just need to follow some notice requirements. And whatnot, but we can pass this on yep. to the select one. So happily. every property owner will be mailed tomorrow. They'll be mailed. They'll be directly mailed, and we'll put a notice in the newspaper. We have to put a notice in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. right. And then, do we want to talk about Jody's? Um... Sure. I'll. I'll definitely. I'll. I'll talk to DP and look at their email more closely to figure out what they need. And I'll talk with Phil Saucier to see what the appropriate uh, sequencing of changes are. Yeah. It, it's where, where are you in the DEP approval or where are we in the DEP approval process? They said, they said they need more, they need more information. That's pretty easy to give them. I think they wanted more information about um, what, Buildings are on the lot. The the current uses of the buildings. 
And what did Phil say about this? I thought I printed out his email, but I don't. Um, I, I just forwarded you the DEP response. Oh, the, that was the DEP Phil, response. Because Phil <laughs> said, talk to the Talk to the DEP, Shoreland wait to see what they say before we move forward. So we're not ready to move this forward to the select one because we don't no. really know what we're moving forward yet. Um, so does does a DEP need prompting from somebody from the town or are we just in a wait, a, a holding pattern? I'm going to... I'm going to see what the next course of action should be between Phil and I'll, I'll respond to the DP coordinator. So it'll be me. I know. Yeah. That wasn't tasking. It was just a question. No, 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 so. no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. All right. You're, you're, Go ahead. <clears throat> questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's that on. Rezone. That's it on new business. All right. Um, I, I just have one last thing. It's just okay. the food sovereignty. Oh, right, right. That's not in which, here. Yeah. Um, made a couple amendments from legal and it's fairly straightforward at this, at this point. And what this is doing, it's allowing farmers and food producers to sell directly uh, to customers and not have to go through some state licensing. And this is something that was adopted from the state. So it's, it's, it's well vetted and it's, it's something that's just a, signal to our farmers that we're supportive of the farming industry in Berwick. All right, now I'm done. <laughs> any questions about anything, Phil? No, it, this wouldn't affect like the farmer's market or any of that type of activity adversely, would it? It only allows sales at your house, so on your property. Okay. So that way... Like um, duck eggs? Yep. So, so for instance, when they when we do the indoor farmers market, would it does it adversely affect that? Uh, you couldn't bring your produce and sell it. You'd have to have licensing. On right. That. It doesn't adversely okay. affect it though. Yeah, no, it, it, it just doesn't. allows okay. you to set up a farm stand in front of okay. your yeah. house. I think. Yeah. Okay. Because I know we've enjoyed coming to the farm yeah. farm market. Yeah. I, just, I think you know, if anything, I hate to see that go away. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Yeah. Okay. No, this is actually the opposite of what an ordinance typically does. Okay. Yeah. It's actually, would any, if anything, would it's it, less restrictive. Right. right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, I like it. Exactly I like it. Allowing you to sell <laughs> your, your extra produce. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So if you had a vegetable stand, you could right. actually have a stand at your end of your driveway that people could drive in. Okay. Pay Even though people do anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. Any questions, Mike? Nope. Jerry. Nope. Allison, any questions? Amber? All right. Well, um, then we will move on to our second public comment session. Jody, anything else? Jody Rogers, 420 Portland Street. Thanks. My question would be, is there um, a chance that we could, does this need to be like, more input from DEP and so forth to get public review in the For, next meeting? To, yeah, just because it's got to come before the board again before it goes to the public hearing so we can make sure that we're good with everything. So that's so, still yeah. possible? Uh, no, because our next meeting is public Probably. hearing. This will be in November. Highly unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because the board would have to review it. Whatever you get from, we'd have to review it before we sh before we send it to the selectmen, which is the purpose yeah, I mean, of our next putting, meeting. We're putting the public hearing notice tomorrow, and yeah. then putting everything we're amending online, right? Yeah. It'd be hard to. Okay, uh, and and I know there's also a public comment um, session that occurs at the at the um, is it the selectmen? The selectmen's or? meeting. Yep. Yeah, yeah but you can't ones. add anything at that point. It's what's already been right. discussed. Right, yeah. Yeah, we had already voted, we would have voted to pass it to them, and then they would vote it in or not. Yeah. Okay. And they voted, yeah, to be voted on. Okay. I mean, I would ask if there's anything that could be discussed tonight to, if we get the information we need before the town. I mean, unless something strongly changes early next week, yeah. you know, then I would just say definitely not. But okay. I'd say there's a, a very, very, very small possibility, but I'm not closing the door. Okay. See what DEP says, yeah. see what. Okay, so you did get some response from them on this and they were looking for existing yeah, they, buildings and use? Yeah, they asked okay. pretty simple questions. Okay. But okay. if they asked for something more, like a, I don't know what else they could ask for, what, whatever the process is or what their approval process is. and if, what, what our attorney says for right. if he thinks it's appropriate to do it a condition on DEP 
He might say yes, he might say you need DEP first, but I will, I won't ask that question. Okay. Would you folks be open to conditional if we don't get an answer from DEP? Um, I would have to refer to the town attorney on that. Okay. I'd, I'd want to hear what he has to say about okay. it. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks. All right. So we're going to close the co public comment session and open our informational items. I have two items of information for you guys. Uh, Dave Andreessen update. He's doing a little better. They have moved him to, I believe, the neurotrauma unit. Um, he did have a little setback yesterday and has pneumonia now, but um, has been communicating, which is a huge plus. And from what I hear, our code enforcement officer had a baby. <laughs> so congratulations, Jen, if you're at home watching. She's watching. She is. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Anybody else? James, you have uh, informational items? I'm just uh, welcome to the new folks on the board and for all the um, added volunteer um, energy that's going on. It, it makes Berwick, what makes Berwick special are the volunteers. And uh, um, if you, you guys have ideas, bring them forward because we can do a lot and we can do a lot together. So I'm just, I'm, I'm thrilled to have new energy. And Me too. I'm, like, I'm glad to see some girls on the board with me. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to have that balance. Um, so I was telling Phil this earlier, but uh, ladies, so for the adjournment, it is kind of our weird little tradition over the last eight years or so that uh, the new, the newer folks on the board will always make the motion for adjournment, and uh, the and second it and, and whatnot. And the more elaborate the motion is, the better. The more points you get. So um, I am looking for an emotion, a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. Oh, okay. <laughs> is that? Yep. Okay, uh, and a second, please. <laughs> Was I not supposed to? Be? No, you were. Yes, you were. All right. Check All right. Out. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Allison? Oh, I'm in favor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys. We'll get you guys trained.